How's it going everyone? I hope you're doing well. Uh, today's part two of my Unity devlog of how I successfully made my dream game in high school. Now if you're new here and you haven't seen part one, I will leave the link in the description. You should definitely check that out first, just for a little more context. And also I want views on it. But today, I'll be talking about many of the coding issues I went through while trying to complete this game. So let's get right into it. Now the first issue I ran into was trying to find a way to have a person dribble a ball, shoot it, and just be able to hold it in their hand. Now the first thing I attempted to do was make a ball that was animated that you could dribble and then have an animation for when you're idle and then turn off the animation and have it shoot when you shoot the ball. Now that didn't work so well so the solution I found was to actually have three separate balls. Now there's the dribble ball which is an animated ball just for dribble moves. There's the player ball which was used just for being in the middle of a layup or a jump shot so that the ball would actually stay on your hand and not like fly everywhere. And then there was a shoot ball that had physics applied to it every time you shoot or do a layup or pass the ball. At first I didn't really know how to properly do this so at first I just had a dribble ball and a player ball and then when you would shoot the ball it would create a prefab instance uh, like right on the position of the player ball every time you shoot but there were multiple problems with that one the way the unity uh, cloth system works which I use for the nets uh, prefabs wouldn't affect the cloth if they're being instantiated so the net would not move and also this happened Now obviously that's that's a pretty big problem, that's not how basketball works. So what I ended up doing was once your player picks up the ball, it enables the dribble ball, disables the shoot ball, and puts the shoot ball in the same position as the player ball. And the shoot ball's position stays the same as the player ball up until you shoot the jump shot, and then the player ball deactivates and the shoot ball activates and the physics is applied to it. So solving that problem was probably the hardest thing I had to go through developing this whole game and then once that was solved it was pretty much not a cakewalk but it was smooth sailing from there for the most part now the next problem I ran into was the smoothness of animations and I saw someone's comment on last video asking if I made the animations and I did and fun fact I'm not an animator I'm not an animator at all I'm actually terrible at making animations so I'm actually gonna show now how I solve that problem and this might actually be helpful for a lot of people who need animations for their game but just don't know how to animate. So there's a website called Mixmo.com made by Adobe and you can bring in any character model you want to use and it just has a list of animations that you could use for free. Now. If you go on this website and you type in basketball, the only animation you'll find is a dribble one. And at the start, I didn't even use this one. But my solution was this. I also downloaded a program called Blender, which is a 3D modeling and animating program. And what I did was I would import these Mixamo animations into Blender and then edit the keyframes to create my own animations. So as you can see this jump animation, I was able to turn it into this. I also found this move, which is normally for soccer, but it worked really well with what I wanted to achieve in my game as a spin move. And it came out like this, and it's one of the main parts of the gameplay now. So even though I may not be a great animator, or maybe that's a terrible workaround, it was something that worked for me, and it was one of the main reasons I was able to actually complete the game. And you know, even that, just editing the keyframes, takes practice. I mean, my animations used to look like this, and while that's not bad, it's not acceptable for a final product. So it took about one to two years and then the animations started to actually come out good. Now one of the biggest mental problems I went through while working on my game was uh, keeping interest in what I was working on. That's not just for baller life, this is for all games I worked on. I worked on 
a fighting game, a first person shooter, and baller life. And I was, I would say, uh, I was in a loop every year of working on one of the three games and each time I'd restart it. And my biggest advice is don't do that. Don't do that if you want to actually release a game. If you're just testing out stuff or just getting yourself uh, more comfortable with your game engine, then that's a good thing. But if you're trying to release a game, do not do that because that wasted a lot of time. My solution to that was I thought reasonably like which game would I actually be able to complete and which game I actually had the most passion for. And you know, after about two or three loops of working on each game, I realized that I was really passionate about the basketball one and not as passionate about the first person shooter and the fighting game. I also noticed the first person shooter market is very saturated and it'd be super difficult to make an FPS game that's unique compared to other ones. And fighting games are very difficult to make. It takes a lot of skill to make that. And it was just something that I wasn't willing to put hours into, which is why that game failed. But with Baller Life, I loved working on the game and there was something unique about what I was working on compared to other basketball games. And I think that's why I stuck to it. My biggest advice is try to work on a game that you're extremely passionate about and if you start to lose interest in it, make sure to take breaks, don't overwhelm yourself, but stay consistent at the same time. So I would try to create a schedule so you have time to relax, time to do your schoolwork if you're a student like me. Now, there's a lot of scheduling programs you could use. Uh, I actually use just Google Docs and I open a doc every night and write down what I have to do the next day on it. And then usually sometime after school or after work, I uh, take a look at the doc and I do everything that says to do in it. But I, I wouldn't recommend to use Google Docs. I would get uh, just a scheduling program or even reminders on like the iPhone. But it's just something that I'm used to using. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed part two of my uh, devlog. If you enjoyed, you know, leave a like, subscribe. Uh, my goal is to try to work part time on YouTube along with you know, still developing games in college. And I really hope that works out, praying for it. And see you in the next one.